Since 2004, a radical experiment in the early years provision has been going on in Wales. At over 40 schools across the country, they've been piloting a new play-based curriculum for three to seven-year-olds. And from 2008, it will be implemented in all schools. Welcome to the foundation phase. Well, when I first became minister um, back in the year 2000, it struck me that there was a real opportunity in Wales post-devolution to look at best systems of education across the world and then see how applicable they were to Wales. Countries which had very, very good early years education were actually turning out more literate and numerate children at the age of 11, and they were also uh, having better participation by adults in post-statutory learning. So I was particularly interested that if we were going to make a whole system change in Wales to education, that we should start with the early years. Cadlay School is in a challenging area of Swansea. They're a pilot setting for the foundation phase, and this programme will look at how they're encouraging language and literacy in their reception classes. Because what we're going to do now, I'm going to pass the box around and you can all choose an animal and what I want you to do is say what that animal did. What did the sheep do? Sheep! Ba ba. Right, pass it to Shania then. I thought you'd choose a rabbit. The rabbit bounced. To cover all the aspects of language and literacy, there's a wide range of activities mm -hmm. that we do. I mean, speaking and listening, I would say... It's Mrs. the that's core the of everything. We, that is it? our main yes. thing. They yes. can't speak and listen it's to others. They can't develop learn anything, can they? Thought processes, you know, because a lot of the children come in and they really haven't got the listening skills. And I think that's a big problem throughout yes. the, all teachers. When we go on courses, that's the one thing that comes up all the time, mm. is that children are coming in with very poor listening skills. Right, good night, Owl. Let's have a look and see what happens in the story. Owl tried to sleep. The bees buzzed. Buzz, buzz. And Owl tried to sleep. The squirrel cracked nuts. Nuts. Crunch, crunch. 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 And Owl tried to sleep. The idea was to get the children to think, well, they, they, to believe that they can read as well, you know, because they take cues from the pictures and they enjoy the repetitive phrases and join in with them and Owl tried to sleep. They, they all picked that up really quickly. The cuckoo called. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. cuckoo. And Owl tried to sleep. sleep. You're reading this book with me. You're very clever. With um, reading, they, you know, we just want to get them at this stage to really, really enjoy books, yes. to want to read, you know, to yeah. develop these positive attitudes to books and reading. I mean, I know of older children who perhaps can read a book. They don't mm. want to. They don't do it through choice. They would never just willingly pick up a little book and no. go and read for themselves. But you'll often see children going into the reading corner and they, yes. they play in at reading, I know, yes. but that's fine. They're reading the pictures and we're get, getting them then to connect that, the, you mm. know, the written word is what we're saying when we read the story. After the storm, after the storm. We're reading Percy the Park Keeper. It's not just one yeah. book. There's a whole series, series of books, yeah. isn't it? And we started off with just the one book, but the children have enjoyed it so much that we decided now we're going to keep Percy for the whole yeah. of the year with us. Yes. Yes. And they're going down really, really well, yes. aren't they? And we can see lots of potential to extend the curriculum through that, exactly. you know? A key aspect of the foundation phase is using the outdoors to further learning. Schools are encouraged to treat the outdoors as an outside classroom. We read stories for different reasons. This today it was to as a stimulus for some of the other work that we wanted to do. They were enthusiastic to go outside and collect the acorns. And the story then acted as a stimulus for us to actually want to go out and collect acorns. It wasn't like we're gonna do this today because that's what I got on my plan then. There was a need, you know, Percy was going to plant an acorn to get another oak tree. So they went out and they were really, really enthusiastic. It's quite interesting that their behaviour and the way that they respond to what's going on around them is different, completely different, in a different environment. Um, children who are on the carpet and perhaps are a little, little bit nervous to say anything or to join in, outside they're completely different. They're 
They're freer. They, they, um, they shout. They've got different voices. They're enthusiastic. They lose themselves in what they're doing. They're really involved in what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, some of this came out when they were, they were picking up the acorns. That was the main thing of going out. But of course, we saw spiders' webs. We saw um, blackberries. We saw different coloured leaves. We saw um, lovely big fat slugs. It, it was all just sheer enjoyment for the children then. <laughs> We use the outdoors yes. for a lot more. We used to take them out, but I think we do. We actually take every opportunity. We sort of stop and yeah. think, well, could we do that outside? Yes. You know, could we do that in a different way? We've got several milk crates. They look like junk to anybody, you know, bits of wood. But they create so many things out of that. You know, they build houses. They, bridges are their favourite thing at the moment, and they just link them all together with planks of wood. They get in communication skills because they speak speaking to each other, they've got to communicate to get everything done. Um, outside then in the sand pit, they were building a wall. Obviously somebody's father is a bricky because the, <laughs> the formation of the wall was brilliant. They had bits of sand in between the insulating blocks. Mm. And there's lots of communication needed for two children to achieve that together, you know. And the, there is a lot of collaborative work with them and they're becoming more confident. I wanted to pick up this whole notion of a skills-based curriculum. Actually, that we should uh, look at learning by doing, not just learning by knowing. And that's not least because a lot of kids come into the education system unable to socialise, unable to express themselves appropriately in language, um, but still very able to play effectively. How we could channel that um, in, in terms of other activities and their learning potential. A significant change is lower adult-to-pupil ratios. The foundation phase will see a 1 to 8 ratio in nursery and reception and a 1 to 15 ratio in years 1 and 2. The role of the nursery nurses and other classroom assistants has changed, I think, in that we have deliberately made more and more efforts to allow them to be part of the planning process. They've always played a part, but now it's a significantly improved part. They've got a huge amount to offer, they've got lots of ideas, and they work alongside the teaching colleagues. We're very hands-on with the children. It's more playing. We play a lot with them. We get involved and they play in role time. Then we do activities with them. Each, each activity, there's always one of us there. Um, so when the children have free choice to go around in each area, there's always one of us there to, do, to help them then or you know, to just overlook them. So our nursery nurses have got a really good understanding of what is required and what is important about what they do. Yes. And you know, they have a role in assessment. They have, and, and they the have planning, a form, isn't it? yes, and mm. in the planning. And if they've got any ideas, I mean, we, we're not the ones with all the ideas. Sometimes, you know, they've trained, they've done two years training, you know, their opinions are valued as much. I mean, they, they, on a day to day thing, they would do very similar well, activities to us. It's not just the, you know, washing paint pots and no, all that sort of no. stuff. Which one do you like the best? Dogs, dogs the owl. Are lovely, don't you like dogs? Yeah, because they're lovely. With the foundation phase now, it's more practical approach to learning, and they learn through activities rather than sitting down and having a group doing a worksheet with, you know, getting things down on paper. It's done in a more practical way. Cameron. We make observations on them and write them down, you know, how they're, how they're doing, so we've got some sort of record for them. What did we say that dogs? The days pre foundation phase, we would have shared a nursery nurse yes. here. So if I'd had a morning on my own, I wouldn't have gone outside with 20-odd 20 20 20 children to do lots of lovely activities outside. You need a smaller ratio to get all the speaking and listening and the social yeah. skills. It should just to, been a to walk make the most of it. Yes, yes. it. Whereas yeah, now yeah. it's a, learn, a real learning experience. Yes. You know? The foundation phase costs are actually phenomenally high. It's meant because of the pupil-teacher ratio that we've had um, a lot of extra funding, funding which we couldn't possibly match otherwise. But the Welsh Assembly Government have made a commitment that by September 2008, when all schools come on board in nursery and reception, that they will provide that funding. Well, we're putting a lot of investment now in, in, into training um, additional staff. And because we're rolling the foundation phase out year on year, um, we'll be putting increased investment in. This is costing us a great deal more than the traditional um, education system at Key Stage 1. But we are prioritising this as a government because we think it's worth it. Pass the magic box round and round, round and round. 
round and round. Pass the magic box round and round and see what you can find. Have a little peep now, Kyle. <gasps> what is it? Put the lid back on. Put the lid back on. Quick, 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 quick. What have you got, Kyle? It's a little snail. Let's see. Let's see what we've got so far, oh, shall we? Oh, 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 what is this? Star. A star. And we've got some star. socks. And we've got a seal. This was the very first time that we'd started doing any um, phonic work at all, you know. So I'd, I'd had the box with all the S items in there. Obviously, the passing around is a big thing with the children. You know, we're we building up on their sort of personal and social skills and speaking and listening all the time. But it happened to be today with the phonic awareness of the letter S as well, you know, the, the beginnings of um, reading, really, then, isn't it? Following that activity, then, the children worked in the group so that they could make S shapes. I mean, you know, we wouldn't sit them down with a worksheet and, you know, and just have them copy in there. You know, we're developing their muscles and their fine motor skills as well and, you know, just the enjoyment, really, and they chat amongst themselves. That's what we start off with. It doesn't always stay on letter S. They might think, OK, I've done that, now I'm going to do something else. But, you know, some children then automatically go to the coloured sand and with a little stick and they'll make the letter S. And they'll, they'll track it that way. We've, we had collage work going on again, you know? So it's... Just to look at the, all the links to get as many skills out of the one activity then. The foundation phase encourages children to begin writing only when they are developmentally ready to do so. There is no SATs testing in Welsh primary schools, so children can progress at their own rate. Look at the book. The bees buzzed, buzz, buzz. And I will try to sleep. So do you think we should write something about your cow here? Yeah. What should we write? Children begin writing when they are ready. Yes. Some will go and start emergent writing now. Yes. You some, know. some have come in being able to write their names, you know, from the nursery. Yeah. But some just aren't ready. And yet. Some are nowhere we near take that. it from because of the numbers of children we've got and the ratio. It's easy to observe them, assess them, and to predict when they're ready for that. They do it themselves. They don't have to do um, X, Y, Z by the end of reception. No. There's nothing like that. It's making it all fun for them and making them want to write, really, and not to yes. see it as something that they've got to do that you know, is a threat or anything. It's just all fun. And it's, it's sort of writing for a purpose. You know, if they're in the home corner, they'll be taking messages from the telephone and writing in a little message yes. book. They'll be writing shopping lists yes. and um, appointments in the clinic. Yes. Oh, go on. It's OK. Ah, oh, wait, wait a minute, then. Chloe can tell me. What have you got, Chloe? A cup. A big cup. I find that um, the children leaving reception are far more confident. Yes. They have a go. They don't, you know... The idea of failing doesn't even enter yeah, into it. it. You know, so that that is a big thing up in itself is an achievement, isn't it? Yeah. Thinking you can do things. We hope that they will be confident speakers, yes. willing to listen to others, to take on yes. board what others are doing, yes. to join in and to have positive attitudes and dispositions to learn in, yes. so that they want to learn to read and mm. they, they just want to enjoy school. Yeah. Can't hope for a, a lot more than that, really, you know. Mm.